Number 20. At takeoff, a commercial jet has a 60 meter per second speed. Its tires have a diameter of 0 0.850 meters. Letter A. How many revolutions per minute are the tires rotating? All right, so here's a little picture, right? Here's the jet, and it's traveling with a linear speed of 60 meters per second. And it has some tires. I just blew this one up so we can see it a, a little better. And uh, it has a diameter of 0 0.850, right? And they're asking us to solve for revolutions per minute. Now you have to think about, well, what, you, um, what variable do those units correlate with? Right? Those, you, those are units of angular speed or angular velocity, right? So knowing that, all right, knowing that this is really omega we're solving for, we want to choose one of the equations on the right-hand side to help us solve. So remember, um, there, omega is found in a couple of equations, but I think this one would be the best one to use. And why is that the case? Well, I'm thinking about what I'm given, right? They give me a velocity and they give me the diameter. So I realize that, hey, I have velocity and a radius in there. So and I also have that related to then what I want to find, omega. So most likely that's the formula. So let's write it on out. So V is equal to R omega. We want to solve for omega, so simply divide out the R from both sides. So we do the work already. So we got the linear velocity all divided by the radius. Okay, so what is the linear velocity? Well, you'll say 60, and you are correct, but remember, it's fine, but the important linear velocity is the linear velocity at the tire. Okay, and they will be the same in this problem, but I just want to make sure you're thinking about it in the right way. So if I choose this particular point, right, if the plane is moving to the right, then the tires are rotating clockwise, and therefore at this particular location, the linear velocity is pointing backwards. So the velocity at that point that I just chose randomly would be 60, all right, meters per second. You might say, well, wait a minute, that's pointing back and this is pointing forward. Remember, it's just a point I chose. If I chose the point on the top here, you'd see that it, that point would have to be pointing to the right. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, so that's 60, and we would have to know the radius, but remember, that's easy, right? We know the diameter here, so the radius would just be half of that. All right, so 0 0.85 divided by 2. Let's just do it now, so 0.425, right? So this value right here is going to be 0 0.425 meters, okay? And that is the radius. All right, cool. So let's just plug it all in. So we have 60 all over, which is really 60.0, right? Three sig figs, but uh, divided by 0 0.425, and that will be equal to the angular velocity. So let's just do that, 60 divided by 0.425, and we get 141, right? 100, 141, and this is in radians per second. All right, so that's the answer, but just make sure that that's the final answer. They wanted revolutions per minute. All right, so we just got to do a conversion, right? So it would be 141 radians per second. Got to get rid of radians. They go on the bottom. Revolutions on the top because we know for every one revolution, there are two pi radians. So the radians go bye-bye. Then we got to get rid of seconds and get to minutes. So I can put seconds on the top here. Minutes on the bottom because I know that there's 60 seconds in a minute. So the seconds go bye-bye. So look, revolutions per minute. Not too bad. So 141 times 60 divided by uh, parenthesis 2 times pi. All right. So one point, so I'll do it in scientific, 1.35 uh, times 10 to the third. And this is revolutions per minute. So this is the answer for letter A. Okay, that guy right there. All right, great. So we'll put A here. So A is done. Let's take a look at letter B. So letter B, what is the centripetal acceleration at the edge of the tire? All right, so let's just take a look at right this particular point right here. Now the, the velocity of this object, the linear velocity, is literally straight out to the side, just like we discussed. But its path is actually curved, right? So what, the, what force is causing the direction to change? Well, that's called the centripetal force, right? And the centripetal force will always point to the center. Whoops will always point to the center, okay? Now, if there's a force, a net force pointing in one direction, guess what there is also pointing in that same direction? There's also an acceleration pointing in that direction. So that's the acceleration that we're looking to solve for, okay? So 
Great, right? Now what? All right, Andrew, get on with it. What formula are we going to use? We're going to use this one right over here, right? Centripetal acceleration formula. Why? Well, because I know the variables here, right? I, I know the, we, just, we know the linear uh, velocity and we know the radius. So that should be very easy to calculate, right? So this is centripetal acceleration is simply the linear velocity or the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. So simply it's 60 squared. 60 squared, all divided by 0 0.425. So the centripetal acceleration is 60 squared divided by 0.425 and 8.47, 8.47 times 10 to the third, and that is meters per second squared. That is the centripetal acceleration. Okay, great. Letter C. With what force must a determined 1 times 10 to the minus 15 kilogram bacterium cling to the rim. All right, so um, let's take this particular point. All right, so let's say the bacterium is here. Now, technically, it actually will depend upon where we are on the tire. Okay, just pretend that you yourself are on the tire. In order, if you were on the tire at this location, I mean, first of all, you'd be, you'd be smushed, right? But let's pretend you're not underneath. You're on, like, the sidewall or something. Um you would have to, well, actually it would depend then if you're on the sidewall, it's going to be different than if you're underneath, but let's just pretend you're underneath, all right? Because if you're on the sidewall, then it's actually the same the whole time. So that could be true. But if you're on, you know, the tread of the tire, that will change because here in order to hold onto the tire, you'd have to not only overcome the, or match, well, no, you'd have to overcome, you have to overcome the centripetal uh, force here, you would also have to overcome your weight that's going to pull you down, right? You might say, well, wait a minute, but you're on the ground. Yeah, no, I know, but but pretend that there's no ground there, okay? When you move over here, again, you'll have a centripetal acceleration pointing towards the middle, but then your weight is going to pull you down this way. So you'll have a net force vector, right, that's actually going to be slightly greater than the centripetal acceleration. But then when you're up here, right, your weight will actually help you hold on. Right, you still have the same centripetal uh, centripetal force. I meant to say, I think I said centripetal acceleration before. You have the same centripetal force as you did here and here, but the difference is now your weight is resting on the tire, so you don't have to overcome that as well. So this problem could become hard depending upon where you are on the tire, and then you might say, "Well, how are we going to do it? We're just going to assume we're we're we're." I was going to say we're we're going to assume we're not on the tire, but let's assume that we're. Um, we're not even going to factor in, let's say, the uh, the mass, okay, and the weight of the bacterium, uh, because otherwise, like I said, it depends on where we we go. But we can do this without doing making that assumption. Uh, sorry, we can do this by making the assumption that the mass is uh, negligible, and you'll see why when we look at the ratio in part D, okay. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. All right. So, any case. How are we going to calculate this? So we're going to look for a formula, right? So we got centripetal force is equal to the mass multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. So the force that's going to be produced and the force that the bacteria must hold on to it so that it doesn't get thrown off the wheel is going to be equal to its mass, which was 1 times 10 to the minus 15, multiplied by the centripetal acceleration, right? So which was 8.47 times, times 10 to the third. And the centripetal force here will be 1 times 10 to the minus 15 times 8.47 8 times 10 to the third. So 8.47, 8.47 times 10 to the minus 12. Don't even really need the calculator for that. So here we have now the centripetal force that the bacterium, whoops, that the bacterium must hold on with so it doesn't get thrown off the wheel. Now. Last but not least, letter D. So it says, take the ratio of this force to the bacterium's weight. So we got to find a ratio, which essentially means a fraction, right? So the weight, we, the force we just found, so 8.47 times 10 to the minus 12, and divide it then by, because it wants to find the ratio of that force to its weight. So take the weight of the bacterium, put them on the bottom. So how do we find weight? Remember, weight is equal to mg. So the weight here will be uh, its mass, so 1 times 10 to the negative 15, multiplied by gravity of 9.80. Okay, so let's see what it is. So 8.47 times 10 to the minus 12, 
divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 15 times 9.8. You get a value of 864. All right, so this is telling us that the force that the bacterium must produce in order to stay on the tire here is 864 times uh, its, its own weight. That's a tremendous amount of force to generate, right, in, in comparison to a ratio of your own weight. All right, so um, yeah, so uh, that basically takes care of this problem. And as you can see now, right, why it's relatively, the weight of the bacterium would be relatively insignificant. Uh, though, I just had to make a note of that, that in case those of you who are critically thinking out there might have realized that, you are definitely right in your thought process. Uh, just won't be that significant here in terms of really affecting the answers. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next problem. Take care now.